good morning to those who are joining from Malaysia and uh, good after, sorry, good afternoon to those who are joining from Malaysia and good morning to uh, those who are joining from Sri Lanka. Uh, His Excellency Air Chief Marshal uh, Sumangala Dias, our High Commission in uh, Malaysia, uh, Diplomatic Staff of the Sri Lankan High Commission in Malaysia, uh, Dr. Prashant Jayaman, Chairman Sri Lanka Boards Authority, uh, Mr. Suresh Dimil, Chairman Export Development Board, and Dr. Sarat Obiseka, Chairman of the Advisory Committee. Uh, so on behalf of the uh, Export Development Board and the Advisory Committee, I would like to first extend a very warm welcome to all of you. And we are truly honored by the presence of the uh, honored representatives uh, from the Malaysian offshore sector. And if I may, uh, my name is Srinath Penand, I am one of the founding members of the Advisory Committee. If I may briefly explain what this Advisory Committee is all about. And this is a form to uh, promote Sri Lanka as a, a marine hub. And also our primary objective is to uh, engage ourselves in the policy and uh, regulatory affairs of Sri Lanka and also to market Sri Lanka as the uh, offshore center. So uh, uh, at the very, uh, to save time, uh, may I now have the opportunity of inviting uh, Ms. our chairman, Mr. Suresh Dimel, to make the opening remarks. Thank you, Srinath. Good morning to those who have joined uh, from Sri Lanka and good afternoon to those from Malaysia. Your Excellency Air Chief Marshal Sumangala Dias and industry representatives from Malaysia and Sri Lanka, dear colleagues. This webinar is organized by the Sri Lanka Export Development Board in collaboration with the Sri Lanka High Commission in Malaysia to provide a clear understanding on what Sri Lanka can offer and the potential and capabilities of the marine and offshore services sector in Sri Lanka. The EDB has identified this industry as a potential export sector to develop and promote to increase foreign exchange earnings to the country. Sri Lanka is blessed with several competitive advantages compared to other regional countries, which are reaping very lucrative benefits and strongly positioning for future opportunities. Sri Lanka's strategic location and the absence of a marine hub between Dubai and Singapore are competitive advantages compared to other regional countries for the development of this sector. Sri Lanka has one of the best, safest and sheltered natural deep water protected harbor located in Trincomalee amongst other strategic and capable man-made ports such as Hambantota and Colombo located in close proximity to the world's busiest sea routes. Sri Lanka is able to provide integrated services for the global clients in the oil industry, subsea related services, services for offshore renewable energy sector, services for liquefied natural gas sector, uh, oil and gas rigs manufacturing and repairing, ship repairing, services for ship layup, marine engineering services for offshore support vessels, etc. The chairman of the Sri Lanka Ports Authority and other industry representatives will provide more insight to you today. We hope this will be a great opportunity for you to connect with the Sri Lanka Marine and Offshore Services Provider. Wish you all a very successful webinar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, for that uh, introductory remarks. Uh, may I now have the pleasure of inviting our High Commission in Sri Lanka in Malaysia, um, His Excellency Air Chief Marshal uh, Sumangra Dias, to address the participants. Good morning to everybody uh, participating from Sri Lanka and good afternoon for uh, all the senior uh, and other uh, officials from the government government entities and also from the, the private uh, companies who are in the industry uh, taking part in this uh, webinar. First of all, I must uh, thank the chairman EDB and the officials for arranging uh, this timely uh, webinar to promote uh, the Sri Lanka as a uh, hub for uh, this oil land shipping industry, offshore industry. And also I must thank uh, the 
participants from Mal uh, Malaysia uh, to for taking their time and you know uh, taking part in this webinar to get to uh, get to know better the opportunities that uh, we have in Sri Lanka. I think uh, I. Uh, when I listened to uh, the chairman of the EDB, I think uh, one thing that was not, I, I don't want to go through that list once again. Uh, I, I just want to highlight, I think it was told, but again, the, the trained manpower we, we have in Sri Lanka for that for those industries. They are the, the uh, skilled uh, personalities who have been uh, trained and employed and who have experience in those industries. So, uh, that is one thing that I just thought that I will mention. And also, uh, as the representative here in Malaysia, I uh, earnestly uh, request the, the Malaysian uh, participants here uh, to take this, uh, take this uh, webinar very seriously. And uh, whatever the opportunity which you find, to come to Sri Lanka. And uh, one way that is, I, I see it in two ways. That is, you will be benefited with all the, all the uh, competitive advantages that you have there in Sri Lanka. And also on the other hand, I think it is not a secret that Sri Lanka at this moment is in a, a bit of a, not bit of a considerable uh, of a, considerable magnitude of uh, uh, economic difficulties. So uh, in that manner, you all will be uh, giving some assistance for us to, uh, you know, come out of that. So uh, this is an important, I, I uh, consider this is an important uh, webinar and I wish all the participants uh, very best and also this is uh, this will uh, to be a very uh, successful webinar. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. High Commissioner, for that uh, address. Uh, may I now invite uh, Dr. Prasanth Jayaman, Chairman of Sri Lanka Post Authority, to uh, deliver the keynote address. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, uh, Excellency, and other participants from. Sri Lanka and from the industry and from Malaysia as well. And it is uh, really an honor to give this keynote speech to one of the timely interventions by EDB and the stakeholders of EDB towards promoting marine related activities in Sri Lanka. We have come long way from 1980s uh, up until present by developing Port of Colombo and some of our other facilities related to Sri Lankan ports to become some of the most efficient ports in South Asia. World Bank and SNP has ranked Colombo port as most efficient port in South Asia and number three in the Asian ring. And this has been a uh, very encouraging factor for us to showcase that our commitment, even from the COVID uh, issues and all the things moving forward, that uh, Sri Lanka is capable, Port of Colombo is capable, and we are resilient, and we are covered, though we are insulated from whatever the issues which are happening inside the country, and we could continue in the same manner. Now, that provides uh, confidence to investors and whoever the people who wanted to come and invest in the marine sector and the offshore sector in Sri Lanka. Just to mention a couple of new initiatives what we have done in particularly in Colombo and in other regional uh, ports. Colombo, as you all are aware that we are already building two large terminals. One is ECT, East Container Terminal Building. Uh, is being built in and uh, at the moment the main contracts have been awarded and they are on track and they are doing the civil construction and equipment uh, purchasing is already on track. And with this thing, what you are going to get is more than 3.5 million 
TU capacity. From the WCT, uh, West Container Terminal, that would, they have renamed it as uh, CWIT, Colombo West International Terminal, which is an investment by Adani, John Keels, and SLPA, uh, around 650 million US dollar investment, is progressing and they are planning to have their initial groundbreaking process in July. Now, why I wanted to mention these two milestones to show that the Sri Lankan port sector is continuously investing on our infrastructure and we are expanding. At the moment, we have exceeded our design capacity of uh, some around 6.8 million. Last year, we did 7.25 million TU uh, uh, 20 equivalent unit uh, uh, transshipment and domestic capacity. Now, this shows that we have exceeded our capacity and we are adding another 7.4 million TU capacity and we, are, we will be making Port of Colombo and our other, other regional ports to accommodate whatever the port-related activities and marine activities around the country. And similarly, inside Colombo, we have done two other major in, uh, investments. One is the warehouse projects and warehouse modernization uh, inside Port of Colombo, and we are actively seeking the participation of investors to come for other logistic uh, related development. And we are planning to have various logistic hubs develop suburbs of port as well as inside port. Now, this, this is related to Port of Colombo. Now, the most lucrative part for the offshore related industries and offshore related businesses is Goal and Trinco as as well and Dr. Basic roles, all we have already identified and we are going to develop it as a tourist hub and a tourist port and we had our symposium and now a lot of participants are going to come and uh, participate in the EOI process and it will be concluded by 23rd of this month and we are planning to develop it as a yacht marina and tourist related uh, area and all the related offshore activities related to tourism could be done. And I marine tourism. And this will be a very lucrative place because we are offering some around 45 hectares waterfront development also in goal. And this will be a very big opportunity for an investor to come and invest in. And uh, when it's come to the Trinco, Trinco was uh, under some clutches some time back due to the regulation issues. And it, uh, there were a regulation that only one heavy industry could have done in Trinco. We have taken off these all the regulation blocks during last year. And now we are ready to open up Trinco as an industrial hub where all the Dockyards and ship repairs to offshore marine at 400 hectares of land, which is surrounded by of Trincomalee. And this is a very South East Asian friends as well as other people to come and invest for offshore related industries as well as any other industries that they think suits. And we, are, we have already done a lot of feasibility studies. We are talking to all the stakeholders and this EOI will come out very soon with a symposium and you all could uh, participate for the same thing. Till that also you don't have to worry, wait. If you have some industries that you wanted to bring in, we have our PND division project development division, you all could always contact, always contact us and we'll facilitate whatever the things that you all want from that way. And uh, apart from these three ports which are directly controlled by Sri Lanka Ports Authority, Port of Hambantara also we have seen as a kind of a very important location. We have a partnership with them also and uh, there we have seen some yacht building is happening at the moment. Uh, some investments are going on over there. Similarly, so many things that you could do, utilizing some land parcels 
and uh, resources in uh, port of Hambantota. Oluwil, Kankasanture are smaller two ports. Uh, Oluwil is at the moment defunct, but Kankasanture is actively uh, starting to get into the mainstream. And with these two ports also, if somebody think a regional, a small level board building or developments, these are very good opportunities for everybody to come in. Now, as of the port sector, what we could say is we are insulated from whatever the issues which are happening from the country. Why I'm emphasizing on this thing is we never stopped during the COVID period. Even during the last couple of months with all the turbulence we were running in, transshipments are happening in the same way, no port congestion, people are coming in, working as usual. And that with that confidence, we have done all the contingencies and again the contingencies for the contingencies for the port related activities to happen in the same vigor and we will be inching forward then doing our development and i would like to thank uh, edb for opening up this stage for us to come and explain about it and i would like to invite malaysian friends to come in Sri Lanka Ports Authority no longer works as a regulatory arm. We are a facilitator for you to come and do the investment. We concluded the West Container Terminal BOT agreement within a record time period. In Sri Lanka, it has never happened. Within a period of six months, we concluded the whole process and they, are, they have already brought in the investment into the country. Similarly, with our strategic teams inside port, so many development could be done and we require or we expect you all to come in and we are here to facilitate and support the industry and uh, all the best and would hope to work with uh, whoever who wanted to come in and work with us uh, in the future. Thank you very much and uh, we'll be open for q and A's if it's going to happen uh, at the last. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jayaman, for your exposition on the port development and your future plans. We wish you all the very best uh, in your efforts. Uh, I would next like to invite uh, Dr. Sarat Obesekar, an industry veteran, and he is the chairman of the advisory committee of the Marine and Offshore Sector at the Export Development Board, and also currently CEO of the Walkers Colombo Shipyard. Dr. You are on mute. Mute, Mike Mute. Sorry. Uh, good morning here and good afternoon, maybe in other places. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I have uh, I have a major in oil and gas sector exploration, development, storage, and even processing upstream and downstream. I worked in oil industry in Scandinavia. UK and I have been involved in many other projects like in Nigeria in designing construction of LNG trains and also for in Qatar I have been involved in building a power, uh, power plants and refineries and other things where we use we develop project to convert LNG into green diesel then we were working for Bechtel to build one of the biggest uh, tank farm in Baroda, sorry, in Gujarat in India. And final project before I came back Sri Lanka to Sri Lanka was for the Libyan government. It was a brownfield. We were, con we were upgrading existing platform in the sea. During this tenure, I understood the potential and the knowledge I have gained, I decided to uh, part with the country here. And I also joined the Colombo Dockyard under Japanese management <clears throat> during a five, six year stint in Sri Lanka during that period. And Colombo Dockyard today is, I think we have a speaker from there as well, uh, who have gone quite far up in their quality workmanship and they are getting a lot of orders from European as well as Asian countries. And I also developed a small shipyard in uh, in Palambo next to the harbor. It's a quite a small one, which is uh, in comparison to Colombo Dockyard. And I have purchased, we have purchased some 
hydro mechanical ship lifts to uh, lift boats and small boats, yachts, and it is still functioning. Now I have decided one when Export Development Board decided to uh, uh, to expand their sphere into develop the national export strategy for boat building and nautical tourism. We understood the potential in developing this field. We have a lot of uh, engineers who have worked in Middle East, Singapore, and even in Malaysia who have come back like we came back, and they are here to. They are very keen to start in a business like that. I'll give. I'll, I'll make a very brief presentation of what can be do, done here. The idea here is uh, we talk about shipbuilding. We talk about the engineering expertise we have in naval architecture. But when you move into offshore oil and gas sector, we are going a little bit further up in the knowledge base. You know, if you look at a ladder, you have uh, small scale steel industries, then you have shipbuilding, boat building, then you go into more sophisticated like uh, nuclear, sorry, icebreakers and things like this. And then you move further up, that is into offshore engineering, which is, where you have to get these plants operated in a very, uh, very heavy winds and swells in the sea. So there are a lot of designs you have to follow certain rules and things like that. And then that, that, that is where you need more engineering uh, expertise in developing this industry. So you Malaysian investors or Singapore investors and Dubai investors, you have seen how Singapore, Dubai, Malaysia, certain industries, even Indonesia and even, even Bangladesh, even Vietnam has developed. For example, Bangladesh used to scrap only steel where ships are now they are building icebreakers. My proposal is to concentrate Trincomalee as the nucleus for this offshore industry. Trincomalee to be the nucleus and Colombo port city to be the center for uh, other infrastructure like design teams, management teams to establish themselves. And we have a direct connections from uh, Trincomalee to Colombo. Unfortunately, we didn't have the Millennium Corporation project. Otherwise, we would have had a very wide exposure in developing logistics and other shifting the trade from China to here was in our plan. I think it will come in time to come. So I will show you a small presentation to convince the investors, despite the fact that we have a little bit of a setback due to various uh, issues in the country. We as professional think that we should not uh, bear, we should not concentrate on those problems and try to get ready now itself. And as the chairman of the Ports Authority just mentioned, you should uh, make a even unsolicited proposal, even a proposal with some uh, ideas what you can do, which is beneficial for the country, our country, and you as businessmen. I'll show you a little small presentation to uh, further expand my uh, what I'm telling you. And uh, this is okay. Uh, I assume you can see the screen, everybody? Yes, we can. We can okay. see. Now, uh, let me enlarge it a little bit. Investment in Sri Lanka in marine and offshore sector. This is the topic what we are talking about. We are not talking about just ship repairs, boat building. Ship building at a higher level, yes. But this is much more than ship building, much more than boat building. Nautical tourism and the things will come in time to come, but uh, we are. I'll just. I think. I'm. I think we can even. EDB can distribute the uh, this uh, PowerPoint, and I'm um, again giving due respect to EDB Export Development Board, which is uh, doing the discharging their duty diligently, trying to attract investors from all over the world. We had many presentations to many high commissions and embassies. We have had some inquiries. Now, 
if I quickly read support existing activities connected to layup of oil rigs, and uh, sometimes I think we get FPSOs, floating production and uh, storage and all float. One of our speakers will elaborate on that in time to come. That shows the potential location of Trincomalee, which is one of the largest uh, natural harbors in, the, in this uh, region. And uh, having Trincomalee as the base, in addition to the industries we are having in, in this country, yeah, I'm sure you can develop it like Singapore developed many years back. I think you know when their uh, prime minister long time ago uh, separated from Malaysia to was it Malaysia? Yeah, I think they separated and became Singapore. He went to the shipping companies like Keppel in UK and other countries don't run away, work with us. And today you have yards like Zimbabwe, Keppel, Tuas yards, various shipyards. They have moved in traditional shipbuilding into offshore inland gas sector. That is where the future is. And uh, your investment is timely because nobody has come in so far other than the British who were occupying most of the Trincomalee and developed a massive tank farm many years ago in the war and it is still open for development despite the fact that Indian government and companies are working on it. Uh, we need to develop facilities for consultancy companies to carry out design, construction and project management. I used to work in that field in those European countries where the latest software and other tools to design and uh, project production plan to be done in Port City means probably. I remember many years back when I was in Scandinavia, working in Scandinavia as a young engineer, we were exported from UK to Scandinavia because Norwegians did not have the expertise. And now Norwegians are in the forefront and they have even developed this subsea drilling, exploration, production and equipment like ARCA engineering. That is the culmination of what they learned from, from the other European countries like French, Italian, and uh, UK companies. And uh, they are now converting. Uh, my the idea of getting investors to come to Trincomalee is a vast harbor where you can develop this uh, industry. And maybe in a small scale start, you don't have to spend a lot of money to uh, for example, to build a big dry dock and things like that. I'll explain to you in a very in a nutshell what you can bring so that you find it viable to come. Then our idea is to entice global companies to establish satellite offices. Many years back, uh, UK had all the satellite offices and then slowly people start moving into Singapore. Singapore became the center of excellence because the cost of man hour of designing, good old days, I'm talking about 70s, 80s, when they were about 100, 150 rupees, sorry, pounds per man hour in UK. Singapore used to do is for 10, 20 pounds per man hour. Now, of course, their prices are rising up and Sri Lanka, we are still, we are still quite cheap. One of our speakers will most probably explain to you how cheap you can do these things. Now I go into the capacity building also we need to develop and also we need to develop bonded warehousing, you know, the Japanese sort of methodology of just in time type industry uh, infrastructure has to be in, a, in this industry. So I was participating in one of the American Chamber of Commerce program and the USA to develop doing a trade shift to bring these warehouses, bonded warehouses to Sri Lanka. And uh, we are also, EDB is also spearheading a program to upgrade, augment current, current uh, curriculum in the universities, which is working very well. And we have made, I have organized some seminars and also lecturers from Scandinavia also about the software, latest software, which Kalamu Dokkad is now using and doing very well. And I will quickly go through, yeah, I don't have to read everything what I'm showing you. And there is a, 
uh, we can be in par with the global players. This is the right time to come. And you might be knowing in the business, this is the right time to invest. This because you get, you, in a, you have a better bargaining power. And uh, I would like to see, we would, I don't think we'll see that in our lifetime, but in time to come, what Dubai, Singapore, and even Malaysia achieved, we should achieve in Sri Lanka. And messages, make inquiries. We are here to help with our knowledge and give you some ideas where you can invest. And uh, we go to the next. And uh, facilities available in offshore engineering consultancy firm worldwide to establish their branch offices. You might be knowing in, in KL you have, and even in China, when I was designing and we were building a uh, oil tank farm, 125,000 barrel for Reliance Petroleum. The company you, you are having, you have a branch in KL, which is called uh, Bechtel. I used to work for them. I, they used to teach us. They had a thing called even Bechtel University to teach. They had a branch in China and their branch, they had a branch in New Delhi. These companies should come to Colombo. I hopefully Port City will give them uh, space and expats can come here, good life here. And uh, people love to live in this country. And simply by tax structure for expat company, there are so many benefits you may be demanding when you come here. And I'm sure government will accept you open hand. And the existing development in offshore sector. Well, I don't want to elaborate on the LNG development in Mana. Mana. I think uh, Kane in India and UK, they did uh, studies and they did exploration. Now they are still discussing. I'm still not happy on the progress, but if we have a offshore industry, we can get involved in this uh, development of those uh, oil wells, which is Barracuda and there's another one. And you remember. And then of course, as uh, previous uh, chairman Port Authority said, a little bit of a politically sensitive name, but still, Adani Group in India is going to develop uh, wind power plants, which your company or whatever offshore oil industry can participate or uh, make an input. They are going to, uh, most probably they are going to do green hydrogen development, which is the future. And of course, wind power plants, which is because that wind tunnel from Trincomalee down towards Mena is ideal for wind power generation. Even 500 megawatt wind power you can generate. Then you go around. I they have a covering basin in the northern part. I was the chief, I was uh, the lead uh, in the environment impact assessment for Kaveri uh, basin, which is a shallow area. We have proposed certain drilling methods and uh, existing jagap rigs for shallow water can be. And on the eastern side where the Trincomalee is you can, uh, they can do the development. And if you have a center in Trincomalee, I'm sure that will be very useful. We have about 100, I think about 12,000 square kilometers of sea right around Sri Lanka. And we can definitely uh, develop that industry. Then we have offshore wind farms, offshore wind farms, which is the catchword in the Europe and also in the Scandinavia, if you look at this magazine. So, News items you will see, they talk about offshore wind farms, offshore platforms, floating platforms where they mount the wind farms and those countries are moving into sustainable energy. Then wave energy is, is a new uh, industry. A lot of Korean companies came here. I helped them to develop certain methodology. Somewhere in uh, Hambantota, they have a very strong undercurrent where they have done a study. This area where the company can base in Singapore in uh, Trincomalee and also get involved in that. I was, when I was the chief executive officer of the Colombo Dockyard, and also later I was approached by the Chinese company Costco. They wanted to build a, another dockyard right next to the Hambantota port. I gave the layout. And I still I was looking for a newspaper article in 2015. They signed agreement with the Port Authority to develop, but then 
Chinese have moved in and they have taken over the management and now the whole attention shifted to Trincomalee. Then they were talking about LNG related FSRU, floating storage and regasification unit, which was supposed to be installed in near Colombo Harbor. Another industry which is booming, well, if our economy, our economy or our financial situation improves, this should come up. If we had LNG uh, storage up in that uh, place where they were planning to install about six, seven kilometers away, we would have been up in the deal. And I also worked with the uh, Abu Dhabi uh, uh, oil storage company to establish a tank farm and even a floating storage tank. Uh, Dr. Seven Dr. Seven Dr. Seven Dr. Time is uh, up now. Okay, I'll quickly go through. Yes, Give me a little bit. Uh, now I have explained the necessity and thank you very much uh, for <laughs> warning me. And this is, uh, I have just put a uh, map for you to see how we are located and you can see all these eastern indian uh, towns or the close proximity to india how we are located and you can see the location of trincomalee i can send you all the details and uh, this is where even the british time they were hiding their submarines and also in the the uh, japanese tank farm uh, not Japanese, sorry, British tank farm was bombed by Japanese. I went there about 30 years back. I saw a piece of Japanese uh, kamikaze, a piece of uh, plane uh, engine was still inside that. I think now they have started developing. This is the area we are thinking of, and this area is called uh, uh, Klappenberg. There's a, I have an ADB uh, report was done. I can share with you. They have recommended what can be done. And this is, uh, look at this particular map. You can see how massive this harbor is. This is where the uh, uh, solar power plant is going to be installed by India, most probably. And you can see the connection between Trincomalee and Colombo straight line. And uh, that is why you could connect yourself with Colombo. I don't want to open this up, but I'll show you uh, some maps to show this is the ideal location. And uh, this is just a cut and paste photograph from Zimbabwe shipyard. This was 30 years back, is barren land. This is what our dream should be. You need to bring few things, like, for example, uh, I don't want to, I'm just telling you, you may ask for about 100 hectares, maybe, in the land, harbor front, and you should bring in the Klappenberg or wherever suitable, then you, I would like to see this in 10 years time. What we can do is you can bring some, I can even, I gave even a certain specification for your plants. You can bring a few gantry trains, you can fill one or two floating trains, 2,000, 4,000 tons. You can start working. Do the modu models, modules on land. Colombo Dockyard has a lot of experience in that. And I think they have developed their technology. I have been instrumental in developing that building technology. And they are now continuing the young generation. And uh, you should have various uh, steel structure, fabrication workshops you can develop Trincomalee into a dream uh, offshore center for this part of the world. And you can bring some offshore mooring boys. Mr. Ricky Barnett is using some of them to bring rigs. He will explain something. Uh, I will stop at this. And I have also explained to you about capacity building. We are teaching, we are having programs, training to to teach a lot of students. And our, our engineers are now in leading positions in Dubai, Singapore, and even Malaysia, I guess, and definitely in Europe. And uh, these companies used to work in those countries. They are the com companies who we would like to come and invite to have their satellite office to start this business. Port City will give you a lot of benefits. The software, what we used to do now, the new software have come up. 
can bring and we have a very good uh, uh, you know, these um, Wi-Fi systems and things like that where they can work on. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. I did my part, I think, to convince the people that we are not out yet. We are still kicking like the cricket two days back. Thank you, Jaman. Thank, uh, you, thank you, Dr. Obisekar, for your detailed presentation and the uh, market uh, opportunities in Sri Lanka. Uh, we are now invite uh, Mr. Ricky Barnett, he is the CEO of uh, Haley's Energy Services, to make his presentation. Thank you, Mr. Srinath. Uh, good morning uh, to the Sri Lankan team and uh, good afternoon to Malaysia. Uh, let me start with sharing my presentation. Right, I'm here to present to you a little bit uh, about what Sri Lanka can do in this emerging market. I represent a company called Haley's, which all of you might be knowing, the Sri Lanka's largest blue chip conglomerate with about over 38,000 employees. Um, we are very, very well diversified into 16 sectors. And I come from the marine and energy sector of the group, where, as you see in this list, long list, we operate our own vessels. We, we are into tarbor, um, towage and salvage business. Uh, we have our NGOCC services and many others. And in that, we have an energy domain that we are focusing. So when Sri Lanka went into oil and gas exploration just after the war, in 2019, uh, we pioneered uh, the uh, offshore oil and gas exploration logistics business and where we have come to today. Our sector, the marine and energy sector, the cluster is today Sri Lanka's largest sector, uh, as you can see from the slide. We have about 21 ocean going assets that we own and operate and charted as well. Uh, we are one of the leading uh, bunker suppliers in Sri Lanka. We control about 26% of the market share. And today we have the most powerful and handling tug in Southeast Asia, South Asia called Virgo, which we do the, all the... Um, salvage and towage business. So one of the largest sectors that we operate, I, I represent that sector and in charge of the international business expansion as well for the sector, over 200 people working here. And we also operate our services in Singapore, Malaysia and Indonesia. We have, we do a feeder service there. We have our own line called Advantage Sabang Raya Lines. And in Maldives, we control quite a large market share in terms of the trade between the two countries. Moving from there, I want to show this to you, which all of you might be very familiar with this map. Uh, so many reds, greens, and yellows, all those are ships. Uh, the screen on your left will show the busy traffic route. So many ships, and even you can't see Sri Lanka over here. But on to your right, if you see, you see the number of vessels passing our beautiful country. The southern tip has access to about 200 to 250 vessels passing a single day. Just imagine if we can tap into about at least 2%, 5% of that market share to come to our beautiful island. And uh, as the port chairman explained, come to Colombo, make use of it, go to Gaul, make the opportunity in tourism and come to Trincomalee, which we are trying to focus and develop as a more brake bulk, logistics, marine services hub. So this country sits right in the middle of this heavy traffic route. Like what we do in tourism, let's promote Sri Lanka. So please support us to bring this marine traffic into the country. Our ports are ready, our teams are ready. We have very good teams and very good companies. We have taken the Sri Lankan brand overseas as well, and we are doing a good job. So we only request your support to help us unlock this potential, this traffic. If you can help us to tap into at least two to 5%, we'll be really beneficial. And it gives really good access to the entire Indian subcontinent. As you know, India's east to west and west to east has, has no uh, long um, uh, transit times. So you have to go through Sri Lanka for that. So you can make use of Sri Lanka if you want to access opportunities in India. Coming into the sector, uh, what we're trying to do is, in India, um, the, uh, there's a place called Alang. And in Bangladesh, uh, there's a place where you used to uh, call it the graveyard, if I may lose the words loosely. When ships age up to 35 to 40 years, she needs to uh, go to a last rites. So those ships needs to be scrapped. So all these vessels now pick Sri Lanka and come and stay here. 
locate themselves in Trincomalee or Hambantota, remove all the important stuff and make her ready for her last voyage. So she gets scrapped and uh, the metal gets, uh, the steel gets sold off. So in that terms also, you can use Sri Lanka as a hub to promote those uh, services for uh, vessel scrapping. Uh, one niche area that we are trying to focus through the sector is layups. Uh, why layups? Um, any vessel, as I said, when it's coming out of the market or when the market is having a downturn, she needs to stay, the vessels need the place to stay, like parking a vehicle, a vessel, any boat, any big ship needs a place to stay. So in Trincomalee, as Dr. Salato Basic explained in his presentation, we have deep waters. So even large tanker ships, large ships like FPSs who need bigger drafts, uh, semi-submersible rigs, which needs over 30 meters of draft, can come and park herself here. India is drilling um, for oil and gas aggressively. So a lot of rigs come into India. But once they finish their contract, say in six months or one year, they need to keep the rig somewhere else. Otherwise, you get caught to this uh, various tax issues in India. So most of these Indian companies, rig companies come to India, they prefer to come and park their vessel in Sri Lanka and then bid for the next contract. It can be in Malaysia, it can be in the Europe or wherever. So we are promoting Sri Lanka for that purpose as well. Bring your rigs. Now, we recently, the last week, we had one of our drill ships, which was here for one year, and she decided to sail to Labuan in Malaysia. So you have this twin destination. You come to Sri Lanka, get yourself ready for six months, and then go to a campaign in Malaysia, because Malaysia is also uh, drilling uh, oil and gas aggressively. So these layups, there are three types of layups that uh, we focus on or the market also knows about. Hot layup is very close. You have the full crew complement. So we in Sri Lanka, uh, the two ports, Hambantota and uh, Trincomalee, are connected, especially Hambantota is connected with the highway. So within two to three hours, you can get your crew transited to the airport, to the port. And so most of the ships prefer to come to Hambantota and do their crew changes, get the ship ready uh, for their next project. Warm layups is where someone wants to park the ship for maybe three months or four to five months, maximum six months. And uh, we handle the local crew as well, where you can send off all the expat crew and complement them with the local Sri Lankan crew. So your cost comes down. Um, that services we offer very good in Sri Lanka, especially in Hamantara port. And coal layup, uh, certain unselected uh, areas we offer uh, where you bring down your crew to a minimum level and allow the vessel to stay in the same position and then sail out when it's ready. This is an interesting map of the market. Why layup business? As you see, uh, for any vehicle, you need a place to park and service. Same way, vessels need a place to stay. So where are this? layup market or stacking market is. As you see in this map, the highlighted and uh, circled areas in red and pink, these are the most preferred locations for vessels. They go and park all these vessels in these locations. We have brought Sri Lanka to the map because of her location and capability. So please support us. Uh, like the EDP chairman mentioned, uh, Sri Lanka sits right in a big route sitting with opportunities. We need your support to bring our market into the game. So Sri Lanka can be preferred as a good layup location and add this, add our country to the map of layup locations. These are the, this is the Sri Lankan map. With, um, I've drawn the two, uh, yeah, the airports. So uh, Hambantara port, which is at the Southern tip, has a, a international airport very close by to her. And in Trincomalee as well, there is connection, uh, there's domestic airport where we can do the shuttling and, and a road connection, a good road that you can uh, move your crew from the airport to the port. All these ports are ISPS uh, 1 certified, so no need to worry, one of the best rated ports that you can use for layup services. These are two aerial pictures. Uh, on the left, what you see is the Hambantara port at the bottom. and um, and top is the uh, Trincomalee port. Uh, deep water ports, um, Hambantara port, you can go up to about 50 meters in draft. And uh, if you have a vessel that needs a parking place or layup at a key site uh, where you can reduce your cost, Hambantara port is the preferred option. And if you want to stay in an anchorage connected to a buoy, 
we promote Trincomalee port, uh, which is a very good location and a very safe port to be. Um, so I've been talking a lot and showing you pictures, but I need to show you some real pictures. So these are the assets, as you see, worth million dollars who have selected Sri Lanka confidently and has bought these uh, assets to lay up in Sri Lanka. On the left, right, far left called Olinda Star is a semi-submersible rig that we bought to Sri Lanka in 2017. She needed a draft of 32 meters. So we offloaded her and kept her in Trincomalee and did all the servicing repairs and send her to India. She's now working in India for ONGC for the last two, three years. And then Aban Abraham, this is a rig that came from Singapore. Uh, she's from a Singaporean company, Aban Abraham Singapore. So she's in layup. She's uh, getting ready to go for scrapping to India. She's on her last voyage. And the one in the middle is Durubai one. This is Aker from Norway. They are biggest APSO, over 300 meters in length. Uh, we bought her here and she stayed in Hambantota for about uh, two years. And now she's in Trincomalee uh, in layup in uh, the Trincomalee port. And the other two, West Polaris from America, uh, from a company called Sea Drill, a US company. Uh, they have sent us two rigs. One is West Polaris and what is one is West Karina. Polaris, as I mentioned, is now on her way to Malaysia and Karina has already gone to uh, Africa. And the others are uh, a STP boy, which weighs about 600 tons. So you can see uh, the US companies, Norwegian companies, Singaporean companies, Brazilian companies have selected Sri Lanka confidently because of the service level, the facilities that we have offered. So we encourage and we look forward for your support from Malaysia. Please help us um, connect, make the connections to us, make the productions. We are ready to take on any asset and give the service uh, repair, look after and uh, promote the business in Sri Lanka. These are some more pictures of key site layups. You can see the berths and um, how the vessels are being uh, connected here in Amantara report. And this is some paper articles, press articles, the publicity that we got for the vessels we bought into Sri Lanka. Another article covering the largest FPSO, protein production vessel that came to Sri Lanka for layup. Yep, so I'm coming to the end of my presentation. Um, right at the middle is given the link to the EDB page where our company details are mentioned. So you can click on the link. I'm sure Idumini will uh, share the presentation with you all and you can find our details. So please support us. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity and uh, good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ricky Barnett for your presentation. May I now like to invite uh, Mr. Darshana Chandrasekhar, Assistant General Manager, Columbus of Kya, to make his presentation. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, good morning uh, from Sri Lanka, uh, for the Sri Lankan audience, and uh, uh, good afternoon to the Malaysian uh, audience. Uh, let me introduce myself. I have uh, with Kalama Dockyard with all, almost 30 years of experience in the shipbuilding and ship repair industry. So let me take you through. Uh, can you see the screen? Yes, we can. Okay, this uh, person, yeah. Okay, uh, I will take you through, uh, now uh, as my previous speakers and doctor has explained uh, the, the, the importance of uh, Sri Lanka, I will take you through some of the technical capabilities, what Sri Lanka can offer to the Malaysian market and the Far East. So uh, I will give you a brief intro into Colombo Dockyard, which is, uh, the pioneering ship repair and ship building organization in Sri Lanka, which is operating uh, uh, with Japanese collaboration for the last almost 29 years, uh, a joint venture uh, in 1993. So uh, the main industry or the operating business sectors uh, for uh, Colombo Dockyard, we are in ship repairs. We can go up to Aframat size uh, dry docking then uh, on the ship building side, we can, we are actually uh, born into uh, high-end cable layer 
uh, shipbuilding and currently in one of uh, i will take you through some of these interesting projects then specifically for this uh, presentation we are also into offshore engineering and heavy engineering so these are the capabilities which i'm trying to explain uh, to this audience where you will have confidence in uh, looking at colombo or sri lanka as a destination for uh, the offshore industry as a uh, total package this is a uh, colombo port this is the aerial view of the port where we are located this is the uh, is the 11.1 hectare uh, uh, location uh, sandwiched between two container terminals so we have our dry dock raven dry docks within the port uh, 30000 dead weight ton dock number 1 uh, dock 9000 dead weight ton dock number 2 which is predominantly used for ship building then 8000 dead weight ton dock number 3 and 125000 dead weight ton uh, aframax main dry dock and repair berthing uh, locations also you can see you can see we are fully occupied and we have the full infrastructure to handle many of these uh, interesting repairs so i will take you through some of the ship repairing portfolios uh, because of our location we had various types of vessels starting from specialized tankers lpg container carriers dredgers offshore support vessels super yachts passenger coast guard and naval so if you take annually we will be doing about 200 uh, repairs or uh, 100 vessels in dry dock at about 100 vessels at alongside so the graphical images you can see a variation of vessel types starting from general cargo uh, car carriers offshore treasures they uh, looking at the repair types because of our location the re routine repairs will be a general routine uh, uh, which is carried out on uh, a vessel which is coming in for dry docking then uh, as you know a uh, collision damages conversions and retrofit so the ship yard is fully capable of handling a complicated repairs and sri lanka definitely can handle uh, any any type of repair uh, required for any any of these very necessities so if i uh, just give you a briefly brief breakdown on the markets we are covering now if you can see uh, uh, as you know india is one of our main markets being our neighbor maldives singapore and europe europe we have a wide spectrum of uh, uh, clients uh, focused in europe and also the singaporean sector uh, singapore malaysia and the far east so this is one market which we are targeting also uh, with the offshore sector uh, so if you look at the, the wide spectrum of expertise of handling uh, from different uh, countries kalabo dockyard can uh, is a proven example uh, for any of these repair types to emphasize on the uh, technical capability of sri lanka we have started actually starting off from harbor harbor boats or harbor craft uh, with thanks to the ports authority and the sri lanka navy we started building uh, harbor craft for the ports authority and also for the navy the aluminium hull uh, uh, fast craft then moving on to uh, platform supply vessels and anchor handlers during 2004 boom and going on to passenger vessels pilot station vessels work boats and finally we are at this uh, juncture we are actually building cable layer repair uh, vessels for europe i will just give you a brief uh, insight into what complicated uh, uh, repairs of uh, the ship building projects this is a cable layer uh, uh, vessel which we have done for kddi the diesel electric propulsion you can see the uh, these are 113 meter 21.1 meter uh, vessel 
uh, you can see the engineering uh, involvement within these uh, structures the drum cable engines the carousel with the loading arms and the wheelhouse you can see the quality of workmanship and the finish these are basically uh, equal to a superior finish within the interior uh, the engine room the switchboards the mess room and the officers lounge so basically sri lankan uh, standard of workmanship is assured we will guarantee uh, uh, designated uh, class requirements and we can sri lanka can do this so these are the ongoing new building projects um, we are building six uh, eco bulk carriers for norway these are hybrid uh, uh, vessels then uh, cable layer vessel cable layer and repair vessel for france these for orange marine this is under construction so as i said even though the, there is a situation outside uh, the perimeter of the shipyard shipyard is moving uh, strongly and smoothly delivering these projects we are tight, uh, we have a tight uh, delivery schedules but thankfully the government has recognized the priority of the industries and we are moving uh, smoothly and delivering these projects on schedule and some of the heavy engineering projects which are relevant to the offshore and marine uh, industry uh, the piping the steel bridges then also some interesting projects which we have done for uh, maldives underwater restaurants fuel storage lpg terminals uh, exhaust chimneys uh, civil structures and silos and these are some interesting uh, but i thought was just to uh, these are sri lankan design uh, one mr dev malanagi design for underwater restaurant so we've done two of these to maldives this is a uh, moving forward we are promoting it in europe as well with offshore engineering uh, as uh, we have uh, vast experience in handling the drilling platforms this is aban 2 uh, then the floating dry dock this is the indian navy floating dry dock which was handled as a offshore project then the emodu usagar vijay we handled it successfully the sagra kanya which we did a uh, huge uh, integration uh, and refit then the diving support vessels well simulation vessels so all types of vessels basically uh, can be repaired in colombo we have the expertise uh, to meet your requirements in this market uh, looking at uh, trincomali uh, and hamban tota uh, we have floated uh, what we call a rapid response a float repair arm which will service the hamban tota trincomali and gol ports so these teams are predominantly uh, backed by the shipyard they can handle the this collision damages propeller repairs uh, Uh, collision uh, shell the damages so be and uh, basically from trinfo hamban tota colombo uh, so we have opened our office in hamban tota uh, as an expansion of our uh, services then also in trincomalee we opened it in 2021 we have our site office which actually has uh, worked uh, in conjunction with uh, haleys and gack Uh, for some of their uh, layup uh, projects so all this all in all we are the human resource we ha have about 3000 uh, workers on on site out of which half of it is permanent cadre and uh, uh, about 400 trainees on site at any given time and the balance being subcontracted so we have a huge pool of uh, expertise within the kalabo dockyard uh, perimeter and we are uh, quite strong and we are training with onomichi we have a training agreement where we send a uh, uh, number of uh, our shop uh, shop to workers to japan and then they come back uh, uh, train uh, with the japanese ethics and the skill set so that's an ongoing program So we have already done about 350 uh, members uh, on under this program. So, 
an initiative for new markets actually uh, with the maritime offshore uh, industry forum where we have actually looked at uh, uh, moving into some of these uh, structures where dr bisekar was also talking about uh, moving into uh, high end or uh, heavy engineering side for the offshore and marine engineering so we have already gone in to uh, adnoc registration with adnoc uh, for uh, moving in some of the projects towards stream family while we are also looking at the malaysian side if there are any uh, partners who would be willing to link up with kalamu dockyard to actually bring in some of these assets uh, and for repair or construction as itself because we have a huge uh, uh, ship building and fabrication you know uh, expertise in sri lanka so let's move to put that into action and provide a solution or value addition from the sri lankan shores to the marine and offshore industry so so that actually gives a brief of what technology and uh, ship repair ship building and offshore heavy engineering uh, uh, capacity we have in sri lanka to take on any of the uh, projects we have and any partner with any of the uh, players who can actually invest so we will be definitely willing to uh, move in and give the techn technological support to the industry uh, can i uh, th that's all thank you from my end thank you uh, darshan jadu sekar for your presentation uh, our next one is by mr ashan walagidara mr walagidara Uh, is the director of uh, GAC Shipping Limited. Uh, may I now invite you to make his presentation? Thank you, Sri Nath. Uh, good morning uh, to my uh, Sri Lankan colleagues and uh, good afternoon to everybody in Malaysia. Uh, I represent a company called GAC. Uh, we are three hundred officers worldwide. Uh, we are kind of like a franchise of ship agency and logistics uh, plus marine services, which we provide uh, worldwide. Uh, my friend ricky clearly stated the potential which we have in sri lanka we are blessed with the uh, with a perfect location being uh, in the center of the world uh, and uh, as ricky uh, earlier stated we have approximately uh, 300 to 400 ships plying down the southern coast of sri lanka it's one of the main trading uh, lanes uh, so that gives us an opportunity to uh, to tap into that market and uh, like uh, ricky correctly said uh, we have not even exploited 5% or 8% of that market so there's a huge potential in getting these vessels to call to uh, our southern ports uh, like in gaul colombo and uh, sorry uh, gaul and ambantota and then our uh, west coast port uh, which is colombo so there's a huge potential there uh, either it can be for repair services provision supplies crew changes Uh, so i will come into the infrastructure what the investment opportunities can be which uh, will interest you all uh, in the coming slides uh, what i would like to do here is show the uh, some experience or share some experience show what we have done in the past when it comes to oil and gas related services uh, mm -hmm. so i will uh, take you through the presentation and then you all can determine what investment opportunities can be done uh, in in sri lanka itself Uh, as i said gsc we are 300 officers worldwide uh, this is our network of officers uh, which uh, we have so it's uh, easy for us to collaborate with our fellow uh, officers uh, around the world uh, we are predominantly based out of uh, middle east where we started our roots uh, then we have now emergently gone out to the americas and uh, to southern americas plus we have a heavy presence in uh, uh, in australia Uh, and uh, around the japanese waters as well uh, we are 12 officers in malaysia already uh, uh, in malaysia based out of uh, ports uh, in malaysia so we're quite strong in malaysia also uh, so like i said the offshore services which we have offered so far in sri lanka uh, this is the this is the services we which we offer and we've uh, basically broken down to shipping related services logistics and marine as you may see we uh, uh, offer 
all the services related to uh, any ocean going to recall uh, vessels which uh, are interested in, in coming into Sri Lanka. Yeah, so uh, regarding the services which we have done, uh, we were quite active when uh, Cairn won the Block Award in 2007. Uh, this was related to the hydrocarbon exploration in MANA. So they had a vessel down uh, doing the seismic survey plus the exploration, which, uh, uh, which we provided services to. And uh, due to the easiness of doing business in Sri Lanka, uh, and uh, uh, because of our maritime uh, regulations being relaxed when uh, compared to India, it's very much easy to do uh, a lot of ship repairs to crew changes in very short notices. So that's the most attractive part, uh, which uh, any uh, ship owner or any uh, uh, oil related, uh, oil and gas related uh, trader would want because uh, the, the fast turnaround of the vessels and the easiness of doing business. Uh, that's one fact which we enjoy here in Sri Lanka because uh, uh, the regulations are so relaxed that you could get a uh, spare part uh, arriving to uh, the airport and then uh, being uh, delivered on board within a couple of hours uh, compared to uh, most uh, other ports uh, in the world and around the region itself. Uh, so that is one investment opportunity or one uh, basically uh, business development area which we try to market and uh, get a lot of uh, ship calls into Sri Lanka. This is another uh, project which we were involved in the largest 2D, 2D seismic survey, uh, which was uh, done in Sri Lanka. Uh, we, we, the, it was a Chinese collaboration where we had uh, the BGP Pioneer, one of uh, the most sophisticated seismic uh, vessels calling into Sri Lanka. And that was a 40 day project, which uh, started from the east coast of Sri Lanka and went uh, all the way around to the west. So there was a lot of seismic shooting being done during this period. Uh, and it was basically uh, uh, done uh, for, for the Sri Lankan government. Uh, on their interest with uh, certain other oil and gas uh, related uh, major uh, traders. Um, this is one particular uh, unique operation which we did. Again, uh, the easiness of doing business in Sri Lanka, uh, where we attracted one of the Indian owners to uh, have one of their drill ships call into Colombo uh, and do the refurbication of their vessels before they took up a, uh, took up a contract in uh, India itself. So she came all the way down from India and then uh, docked off Colombo Anchorage. Uh, we uh, did a lot of services, as you see, changed a lot of crew. Uh, she was here for a good six months. Uh, and then uh, there was a lot of services, uh, repairs being done on board before she was uh, mobilized back to India for her contract. So you may ask why uh, these Indian, uh, the Indian principals would uh, not want to do it in India. Again, uh, the easiness of doing business, getting the spares on board on time, having it cleared, then uh, people arriving, uh, the easiness of getting visas on arrival uh, to various uh, uh, other services which can be done and offered uh, in, in a very short time, in very short notice. Uh, this is one of the unique projects which we uh, went hand in hand with uh, uh, Colombo Dry Dock. Uh, Darshan and his team uh, built two sophisticated uh, boats uh, in, in Colombo Dry Dock. And then we had to deliver it to uh, Iraq, uh, to the Basra terminal, where uh, it had to be delivered uh, over the rivers over there. So we, we basically assisted them to uh, carry it on a semi submersible barge all the way from Kalam to Iraq waters. And then uh, we offloaded them at uh, uh, the Iraq sea waters and then towed them by uh, tugboats all the way up the river to uh, Basra terminal. So we have the capability, we have the infrastructure uh, in Colombo, in Trincomalee and uh, golf ports as well. We are blessed with depths of water. Uh, we are not uh, challenged with minimum drafts in these uh, ports. 
So there's a lot of uh, things we can do around in and around uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, and given the location, like I said before, it's a huge potential for any investor uh, to come in the future and see uh, what can be developed uh, to, to gain more business out of Sri Lanka. Uh, again, uh, Ricky uh, discussed in length about uh, the potential we have in Frinkamali. Uh, it's it's an un untapped port. Uh, in my books, we are not even uh, reaping 8% of the potential which we have. Uh, she's the second largest uh, natural harbor port in the world. Uh, she has depths which can go up to 30 and certain pockets it can go up to about 40 meters as well. Uh, sadly, the infrastructure is still not there to make it a, a constructive port to cater to the oil and gas market in and around Sri Lanka and elsewhere in the region itself. Uh, we, we attract ship layups uh, and uh, uh, various other deep draft vessels to call into Trincomalee port just to take advantage of the depth there. And uh, based on a location back out of the east, it's quite uh, uh, near to Kakinada, which is one of the main oil and gas uh, uh, ports in India as well. So we've had a lot of, uh, uh, we've had a lot of uh, uh, inquiries related to layups here. Again, uh, like Labuan, we are a bit restricted when it comes to the infrastructure. So that is one potential area which uh, uh, our Malaysian friends can look into in future investments. I'm talking about boys to show bases to various other possibilities. Uh, yeah, so this is the investment opportunities which I see uh, uh, on, from an oil and gas perspective where it might interest you to look at a possible or, so, uh, operating offshore supply bases uh, we have two boys already uh, stationed out in Trincomalee, which was recently done. Uh, so there's potential for future boys to be placed there. Uh, PA extensions, we have the Ashraf Jetty, which, is, uh, uh, which has a depth of approximately 12 to 13 meters and has only 200 meters of length that can be extended. Uh, then possibilities of having floating jetties in the future, uh, Trincomalee. Uh, being the ideal location in my books. And then uh, heavy lift uh, offshore cranes. This is one thing which uh, we do not have in Sri Lanka and uh, which I think we can thrive uh, because I know for a fact that there are a lot of Malaysian uh, uh, service providers who offer these offshore uh, uh, heavy lift uh, show crane opportunities. So that's, uh, that's the kind of investment opportunities which I see in my angle of uh, thinking, which may interest our Malaysian friends to look at in the future. Uh, as I emphasized earlier, uh, given our strategic location, we have 300 to 400 ships passing by every day. So uh, it would be a good opportunity uh, in my books uh, for you all to look at. Uh, thank you very much, EDB, for giving me this opportunity. I'll be happy to uh, ask answer any questions. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ashan Velagidara, for your presentation. So, ladies and gentlemen, now we have come to the Q&A session. The floor is open for questions. And I would like to acknowledge the presence of one Mr. Mr. Gamlath from the Board of Investment. When investment questions, uh, you can answer that question. And we are very much interested in hearing from our Malaysian uh, guest on any matter uh, that our friends have made presentations on. The floor is open for questions, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. What Ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open for question. We would be very pleased to hear from our Malaysian honors guest for the Malaysian offshore industry. Uh, Srinath, may I, may I suggest something for the... Yes, the now, gentlemen, ladies, uh, we should actually provide the contact points and who to contact 
EDB is facilitating, but they could directly contact Sri Lanka Ports Authority or through Board of Investment uh, with uh, certain proposals or inquiries. That would be helpful in EDB if EDB can coordinate them. I, I was trying to emphasize the need to get into this offshore marine sector in Trincomalee where investment can be made potential investors who oh, maybe joint venture partners with uh, Indian companies or even US or Chinese. I, didn't want, I, I wanted to explain a little bit about the petroleum tank farm, the development. I have a PowerPoint presentation, but we'll send it to them as well. Thank you. If you have any query questions, please uh, ask them or as you can, I will uh, type the EDB email address. Uh, you can direct it to them as well. Or else uh, you can send it to Sri Lanka Ports Authority or to any organization. Uh, please be open. And I think we don't have many companies from Malaysia joined with us today. So whoever has joined, uh, if there are any queries, please come up. Uh, uh, I have one question, Doctor Obesekara. If in case, uh, if they want any incentives, any tax benefits, that also we can consider as a as a as a primary uh, advisory committee advising the government. We can uh, lobby the government for any additional incentives or any uh, whatever packages. If any investor is coming from Malaysia, am I right, Doctor Obesekara? Your mic, mic uh, is muted. Your mic is muted. Dr. Obesek, your mic is muted. Uh, yes, absolutely, yes. Uh, if any potential investor has any queries about certain, uh, I would say, uh, what they could actually ask the government about the rates and how they can, how long they can lease a land and things like that. Yes. EDB definitely, with our support, can approach the government and connect them with the decision makers within the government and they can negotiate directly. And they are definitely, they will be inquiring for how long they can lease a land or what are the rules and regulations. I'm also suggesting to them to simplify the government to simplify the current quite stringent rules on the environment and other, uh, other statutory rules to accommodate the investor to start a project like that. But uh, we have ADB reports, Port has all the other reports which they can provide to give some insight. ADB report is available and I can submit, uh, send it out through ADB to these investors. They can look at whatever we talked about is clearly mentioned and highlighted in that report. These are the investors. We can do that. Thank and you. there are also development plans currently underway in the pipeline for, for Trincomalee. So that also can yes, be... I'm, I'm, I don't want to talk on behalf of actually uh, the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, unless the chairman himself, he just mentioned. Uh, the, the, he mentioned about the goal. I have been involved in goal development and uh, for the last 10, 15 years. I think, I think this time something should work out similarly. When they have their, when they are going to hold the Sri Lanka, sorry, Trincomalee Development Symposium, we would, we should try to get as much as possible to uh, part uh, take uh, to participate in that to give an idea about what we are talking about. They will most probably talk about general industry, but we should emphasize the need for this particular industry. And His Excellency. Uh, uh... Our High Commissioner, can you make some remarks on that? Uh... Uh, actually, Srinath, uh, after listening to the whole conversation, I'm, I'm very much impressive of, you know, our, our potential of doing this. So it's a matter of, uh, uh, get, you know, make people here. I mean, actually, it has to be worldwide. But anyway, in this case, uh, 
you know, uh, get in touch with the, the potential Malaysian counterparts to come and uh, work with these uh, impressive, uh, you know, uh, entities like Port Authority and then the GC Shipping Limited and all that. So the, the High Commission is always uh, there and we are, we are standing by to support uh, any uh, potential investor uh, or, or uh, any entity that who need to join hands with the, the oil and gas uh, marine and offshore industries in Sri Lanka. So our, our fullest support will be extended and all coordination and also information. Uh, we can uh, pass to them and they can, uh, you know, seek us for any assistance in related to those areas. So I'll make uh, this an opportunity to thank all the speakers. And uh, again, thank for the, the chairman of the EDP for organizing this. Thank you. All the best. Uh, are there any other questions uh, from the audience, from our Malaysian representatives or anybody? Any other questions? Uh, looks like... Uh, yeah, look like there are no questions. To, 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 to yeah, I think we are. We have come to the end of the session. Uh, if so, that is the case, then uh, okay. Then uh, I would like to invite uh, Mrs. Indumini Kodikar to uh, uh, deliver the vote of thanks, please. Okay, thank you, uh, Srinath. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, since we started in the morning, I think now it's uh, good afternoon to all of you from Sri Lanka and Malaysia. Both ends, and I'm honored to have this opportunity to propose the vote of thanks uh, at the end of this uh, successful session with a lot of uh, experts on board. So on behalf of EDB, I would take, like to take this opportunity to express my sincere appreciation to His Excellency Amashal uh, Sumangala Dias, the High Commissioner, and the team from the Sri Lanka High Commission in Malaysia for the excellent support and the assistance given in conducting uh, this event actually. They supported a lot in helping out to get the participants on board. And my special thanks goes to our speakers and the panelists, uh, Dr. Prashant Jayamana, Chairman of the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, Dr. Sarat Sekara, Chairman, uh, Advisory Committee of the Marine and Offshore Sector and CEO of Walker's Colombo Shipyard Private Limited, and Mr. Ricky Barnett, Director, Haley's Energy Services, Lanka Private Limited. And Mr. Darshan Chandra Sekhar, uh, Assistant uh, General Manager, Ship Repair Business, Colombo Dockyard PLC. And Mr. Ashan Veragedara, Director, GAC Shipping Limited, uh, for their valuable uh, contribution to the web webinar. And also, I must not forget to thank our moderator, Mr. Srinath Fernando, a public affairs consultant who made the event more attractive. And uh, we have with us uh, Dr. Leslie Hemachandra, CEO of LAFS Marine Services, uh, joined with us, and Mr. Gamlat from the Board of Investment, who uh, was here to answer any queries, unfortunately, but we didn't have any questions coming up. Uh, and uh, thank you. I would like to thank all the stakeholders, association members, and the government officials who had joined from Malaysia. Uh, taking their time off their maybe busy schedules today. And uh, we believe by participating this uh, webinar today, all of you got a lot of understanding of the potentials that uh, we have in Sri Lanka and how you can collaborate with us and like bring in more business to Sri Lanka and have a win-win situation to both uh, Malaysia and Sri Lanka as well. And thank you our chairman, uh, Mr. Suresh Nimai and the EDB team like who contributed to the success of this event till the end. And thank you and have a pleasant day. Thank you very much. And on behalf of the, our advisory committee, I would like to thank the Malaysian High Commission for having such a wonderful job and our chairman and the team uh, for having arranged this program. Thank you very much, everybody, for your participation. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.